ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما الحمد لله رب العالمين all praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask him to send blessings and salutations and peace upon the best of creation our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his family and folk and followers until the end of time alhamdulillah rab alamin we begin with the verse from the quran that all people of faith have taqwa of allah have god consciousness and piety with your creator haqqa tuqatihi as much as he is owed and deserved azza wa jal wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun and do not leave this abode except in a state of submission and faith ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadida o people of faith have taqwa of allah azza wa jal be god conscious and pious with your lord azza wa jal wa qulu qawlan sadida and speak correctly and speak what is right do not speak what is ill or foul or debasing to one's soul and so our point of departure being taqwa of Allah, taqwa, protecting ourselves from offending Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from disobeying our Creator. And this light, <clears throat> one of the early expositors of taqwa in our tradition, Ibn Ata, who was a contemporary of Imam al-Junaid in Baghdad in the third or fourth, third century of the Islamic calendar, that he says, Rahimullah, لِلْتَقْوَى ظَاهِرْ وَبَاطِنْ لِلْتَقْوَى ظَاهِرْ وَبَاطِنْ That taqwa has an outward reality and an inward reality. فَظَاهِرُهُ مُحَافَذَةُ hudud. And so the outward of taqwa is to uh, stay within the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set down. To stay within the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set down. To not transgress the bounds of our Creator. This has to do with our personal practice, making sure we are uh, performing our obligations in prayer and fasting and charity, etc. And extra charity. This is an amal of the outward, to give from one's wealth to people in need. And not only the obligatory zakat, but extra charity. This is increasing our taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in particular right now, there's catastrophes, unfortunately, all across the globe. And we should be generous to every situation that we're able to. But right here, in our state, there are wildfires that are decimating and destroying so much property and livelihood. We should be generous out of taqwa of our Lord, out of a recognition of the oneness of Allah and respect to the commands of Allah and honoring what Allah loves is to serve people in need. And so all of the residents of California are our neighbors and our Prophet taught us that man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yukrim jarahu that whoever believes in Allah and the last day then let him honor his neighbor. And so we have, we should be uh, open-handed and generous Again, with all uh, situations of need that we, we encounter, but in particular, our neighbors. Then our neighbors have the first right on us, and so I encourage myself and everyone to, even if it's a little bit, to maybe you know, to give some charity for, for the people that are, have suffered from these fires. And we should also make prayers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring ease, safety, security to uh, our fellow neighbors, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stop these fires. And, and bring tranquility and safety. And, uh, and so this is our dua, that we should be making dua as well as charity. But this is, ta this is from taqwa of the hour, is to, is to be open-handed and generous to all of Allah's creation, irrespective of creed, color, or any other distinctions amongst humanity. 
وَبَاطِنُهُ But the inward of taqwa, the inward of taqwa, النِّيَةُ الْإِخْلَاسِ is intention and sincerity for Allah. In other words, when we do the good that we attempt to do in the world, it's not for the sake of the world, even though we have care and concern for everyone in the world, but it's for the sake of God. It is rooted in God consciousness. It is rooted in an awareness in the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we should have the taqwa of the inward then is aniyya to al ikhlas, is intention and making our works sincere for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so just as works can be either sincere or insincere, a heart can be either sincere or insincere. And this is all from the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Ata'illah, who is different from Ibn Ata, Ibn Ata'illah is 400 and some odd years later in Egypt. He says, Rahimahullah, that كَمَا أَنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْعَمَلَ الْمُشْتَرَكِ كَذَلِكَ لَا يُحِبْ الْقَلْبَ الْمُشْتَرَكِ You know, just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love uh, spiritual works, good deeds, that are mixed, admixed for, with wrong intentions. Done, to, for example, not for the sake of our Creator, but to show off. So that people can maybe give an applause, or people can give a like on some, I don't know, Facebook or YouTube, or people can praise you in the community. This is amal mushtarak. This is an action that is admixed, and so this is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كَمَا أَنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْعَمَلُ الْمُشْتَرَكُ كَذَلِكَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْقَلْبُ الْمُشْتَرَكُ So too, Allah Ta'ala does not love a heart that is that mixed. In other words, the qalb, just like the jism, we can only have one qibla when we pray. You can't face two directions at once. So too, the heart can only face one direction. You can't face two directions at once. And just as the qibla of our prayer is to Mecca, to the sacred Kaaba, the qibla of our qalb is Allah Himself. Right, the direction, the orientation of our hearts needs to be the Divine Himself, Azza wa Jal. And so Ibn Ata'ala continues that Al-Amal Al-Mushtarak La Yaqbalu That uh, good deeds that are done with mixed intentions, Allah Ta'ala does not accept that. Those are unacceptable to Allah. And we ask Allah to accept our deeds even with their admixed intentions out of His pure mercy and generosity. But we know that our deeds are not worthy of divine acceptance. It's only the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allows for acceptance, divine acceptance. Al-amal al-mushtarak la yaqbalu The deeds that are done that have admixed, admixed intentions. Mixed intentions, He does not accept them. Wal-qalb al-mushtarak la yuqbil alayhi And notice the eloquence of the statement because it's the same verb. The same root. The amal mushtarak la yaqbalu, he does not accept it. The qalb al mushtarak la yuqbil alayh, that he does not turn towards it. The heart that is admixed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not turn towards that heart. Allah ta'ala does not turn towards, towards that heart. And we, we, we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to turn towards our hearts, to accept our hearts. And so the taqwa of the inward, seeking a life of increasing in our ikhlas. This is a process, not an event. And so every day, every evening, we should cultivate practices that increase our sincerity to the Divine. This is something that is lost on perhaps some of us, if not many of us, is that we often think in terms of quantity. It's like every day I should try to increase the good deeds that I do. Today, if I, this week, if I gave $10 in charity, next week I should give 15. And that's good, fihi khair, that's, that's more khair, that's more goodness in the world. But perhaps some of us, if not many of us, should be focused on increase, increasing the quality of our works. In other words, we have our limits. You know, we can't continue to just increase the amount of charity that we give, for example, because we have limited bank accounts and limited incomes. We can't continue ad, ad infinitum to increase the number of extra prayers that we do because we have limited energy in our bodies, limited time, uh, plenty of other responsibilities. We can barely maybe get a little bit of extra prayers here or there. But what about the quality of our worship? What about the quality of our devotion? This is something that we can always aspire to increase. We can always aspire to increase and we should aspire to increase and we should cultivate the, the practices and we should cultivate the companionship that facilitates this because it's through a suhba, one of the most powerful means of increasing our sincerity and orientation and awareness of our Creator, of Allah Azza wa Jal, is by being around people with such awareness, by being around company that have greater 
awareness of Allah, and so that such that such that when we're around them, even if they're not speaking of of ultimate reality of divine of the divine reality of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, even if they're not speaking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but we see something in them, in the way they are and in the ways that they are not, such that we are inspired such that we are inspired. We should seek the company, of the intimate company of people whose very hal elevates us, whose very state, the way that they are, their being increases our being. But then we have to ask ourselves is what is the barrier then? Why is it that we fail and we fall short in our awareness and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala such that we have qalb that is not mushtarak, such that we have amal that's not mushtarak, such that we have hearts that are that are that have one orientation, such that we have good deeds that have one intention behind it, and that's Allah alone. The main reason, according to our tradition, is the nafs. The main reason is the nafs, which is our own selves, our own egos, our own uh, entire collection of shortcomings. All of the vices of a person, if they're collected in one collective, they're called the nafs, the ego of an individual. And this is why the first step that we need to take if we want to be people who cultivate days and nights of increasing our sincerity of our intention for Allah is introspection. To be aware of our realities and to constantly seek to apprise ourselves of how we really are. Of how we really are. This is why the early Salaf, they used to focus on this as the first lesson. Uh, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, one of the great early masters of our tradition, Rahimahullah, he says, Qad aksara nasu fil adab. He says, everyone has given their opinion of what the definition of adab is. And this, to, to, until today, you'll find scholars and sages who have different perspectives as to what exactly is adab. It's actually a word that's difficult, if not impossible, to translate. Does it mean manners? Does it mean etiquette? Does it mean comportment? Does it mean just the very right, the, the right, the right way of going about things? There's all these different meanings in, included in this profound, beautiful word, word of adab. أَكْثَرَ النَّاسُ فِي adab. You know, all, all sorts of people have chimed in, have given their two cents as to what adab is. وَنَحْنُ نَقُولُ But Imam Ibn Mubarak says, but our opinion on this nafs. It's to know oneself. It's to know oneself. Know thyself is the beginning of wisdom. In all classical traditions of uh, philosophy and metaphysics, nafs. Know thyself is the beginning of wisdom. And so too in the prophetic tradition. So too in the teaching of prophets. Because tawbah is impossible without self-knowledge. Tawbah is impossible without self-knowledge. And so to recognize our weaknesses, and to recognize how big our egos actually are. And the one that doesn't think they have a serious ego probably has the, the, the most serious ego. We ask Allah for afia. But each of us has this test. And this is at bottom, at the heart of the matter. The only way that we can uh, uh, aspire to be people of Allah is to be people who seek to subdue the nafs. This is what Yahya bin Mu'adh al-Razi, the famous statement, unfortunately it's ascribed as a hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. often in, in, even in our, some of our, of our books, of our tradition, but it's not a hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. It's a statement of Yahya bin Mu'adh al-Razi who says, Man arafa nafsahu arafa rabbahu. That whoever knows himself truly shall get to know Allah. Whoever knows himself truly shall get to know Allah. One of the meanings of this, if they are genuine in introspection, such that they increase in their tawbah, such that they increase in the quality of their hearts and their deeds in their days and their nights, then eventually they will reach a level where they get to know Allah directly. They will be people who are the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this is the greatest thing then, not only to know, the nafs is not only the most important thing to know, but the most, most important thing to keep in check. To keep in check. What did the Prophet say? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. According to the Hadith in Tirmidhi, al kayyis mandan nafsahu. You see, the intelligent one is not the one with the biggest IQ, the greatest IQ. Although, today apparently that's the measure in all arenas of whoever the most intelligent is the one, is the one with the greatest IQ. That's not the kayyis. It's not the one who is, uh, who, who has the, who's the most popular, who has the most friends. That's not the case. It's not the one who 
is able to use their prestige to do this, that, or the other. It's not the one that has ascended in the in their uh, corporation, such that they are at the high levels of of the. Uh, uh, corporate structure of their corporation. It's not the one that has the most uh, degrees from this university or that. It's not even the one with the most ijazas in our sacred tradition, although that's a noble sacred thing. But that's not the kayis. The kayis, the truly intelligent one, according to our Prophet mandana nafsahu, is the one that takes himself to account, is the one that keeps his nafs in check, is the one that is able to subdue the ego and not let it take over through anger, through uh, revenge, through uh, speaking ill of others, through uh, spreading tales and gossip, through backbiting, through miserliness. All of these vices and these diseases, all of the sins of the tongue and the sins of the heart, where do they emerge from? The nafs. So al-kayis mandana nafsahu wa amila lima ba'd al-mawt. And the Prophet continues, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that intelligent one, therefore, he keeps himself in check through accountability, through recognition of his faults, and then he works for what comes after that. He works for the afterlife. He's, his intention is, the amal is not mushtarak. He's seeking al-baqiyat al-salihat, eternal good deeds that will await him in the presence of his master, azza wa jal. But the incapable, unintelligent one, the one that is unintelligent and ajiz, incapable of being something special, is what? Just allows his ego to roam freely in all the whims and follies and the stubborn prejudices of his psyche. This is the ajiz. This is the one that lacks intelligence. Whatever their IQ score is, whatever their resume is, whatever degrees they might have achieved, this is, this is the ajiz. And we don't belittle success in the world. We don't want anyone to misunderstand what we're saying. It's from the sunnah to seek asbab that are real. And so all of us should aspire to increase in our worldly intelligence and our positioning, uh, edu in our education primarily, and then in positioning in the workplace so that we can position ourselves to do more good. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's not in and of itself indicative of what the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us of true intelligence. Intelligence is to realize what's greater than what. At bottom, intelligence is to realize what is greater than what. It's like 8 versus 10. 10 versus 12. 12 versus 14. Any number versus Allah. Any benefit versus Allah. Anything I can achieve in this world versus Allah. Eternal good pleasure with the master and creator of every atom in the universe. And this is intelligence. Which is why it's worth it to keep the nafs in check. And so Al-Ajiz man atba'u nafsahu hawaha allows himself to roam freely in all of these wrongs and prejudices of the soul. But then has vain hopes that Allah is all merciful, Allah is forgiving. So even though I'm not taking my relationship with him seriously, I can just rely on the fact that Allah is all-merciful. Yes, Allah is all-merciful, but His mercy is specially selected for those people of Ihsan, those people that take themselves seriously for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And one of the greatest harms of not taking one, oneself to task, of not being a person of introspection, is that this is the recipe for heedlessness. This is why pe most people are unaware of their Lord. This is why we, m many of us go about our days and our nights not in a direct relationship with Allah, not having the remembrance of Allah on our tongues and in our hearts. What is the great veil that prevents us from seeing Allah? It's not, the veil, it's, not, it's not a veil in objective reality because Allah cannot be veiled. The infinite by definition cannot be veiled. The eternal by definition cannot be veiled. It's a logical contradiction. There's no veil of Allah. The, the, the world is ayat. When we read the Qur'an, Allah SWT is constantly apprising us and, and, and signifying to us the ayat. We are ayat. ayat. Each, each human being is an ayat, a sign, a miracle, pointing to Allah's infinite reality and eternality and omnipotent power. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nature, the wonders of the horizon, the wonders of human cooperation, of human societies, the cosmos. The terrestrial realm, the celestial realm, all of these are ayat. It's a matrix of signs signifying Allah. 
Azawajal, then where is the hijab? It's a subjective feature of reality. It's not an objective, extra mental feature of reality. The hijab, the, the reason why we can't see our Lord, Azawajal, in other words, recognize Him in the world, Azawajal, is because we have waham in the mind. It's because we have illusions and delusions that cloud our, the ability of the heart to see reality as it is. And the dua of the Prophet Wasallam, Allahumma arin al-haq, Allahumma arin al-ashya kama hiya. Oh Allah, show us things as they really are. What, what are they really? Signs of Allah. Because they're the action of Allah. There's nothing that exists in the world except it's the direct act of Allah Azza wa Jal. Hada khalqullah. In the words of the Quran itself, Allah Ta'ala says, this is the creating of Allah Azza wa Jal. The khalq here is in, in, indicating not the makhluq as it often is translated, but the actual activity of khalq. The masdar means activity. Not, it, it only means the direct object by metaphor. And the default reading of scripture is literal. When it, so unless the literal reading is uh, something that cannot, is, is, is uh, illogical. And so then, this is the creating of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the creating of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is why another early master, the Nur al-Misri rahimahullah ta'ala, he was once asked, ma, uh, ma athqalu al-hijab wa ashadduhu. You know, what is the heaviest and most intense veil that prevents people from seeing their Lord, from recognizing their Lord, from knowing their Lord? Ma athqalu al-hijab wa ashadduhu. He said, ru'yatu nafs Ru'yatu nafs wa tadbiriha. Is to, is to just see oneself. Me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. Wa and tadbiriha. To, and to be fixated on one, one sense of control. You know, the tadbir is not simply to plan. It's from the sunnah to plan. It's from the sunnah to plan. We have to use the asbab in the world. But tadbir is to be fixated on outcomes and to think one has control of outcomes. And this is something blameworthy in our tradition. And this is it, it, going about our days and our nights and our tasks and what we need to do and what I should have done. And we're fixated on our sense of control and our sense of designating outcomes. This is the veil. Because outcomes are in the hand of Allah. Jalla hukmul azali an yandaf ila al-ilali. Jalla hukmul azali an yandaf ila al-ilali. Ibn Atala says, Etern, etern, the eternal ruling is too magnificent, is too special to be ascribed to means in the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need means. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has determined things eternally, in pre-eternality, as it's often translated. The decree is already decreed. The decree is already decreed. And so to be obsessed with our seeming ability to control outcomes, this prevents us from seeing our Lord as well, of recognizing our, our Lord as the Wajal. Abu'l-Qur'an, 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 Abu'l-Qur'an,
once, twice, thrice, before saying whatever he wanted to say. He'd have to take the pebbles out to speak. Gives him time to think, so he doesn't just react. Even if someone tries to do this sunnah of Abu Bakr today, the keyboard, we'd have to put, I don't know, juggle pebbles or something every time we go online. Because how quick people are reacting. And then, ghiba, global, global ghiba, global backbiting. Namima, global slander, global tail-bearing. Kadib, global lying. Just, a'udhu billah. Uh, the, uh, Allah, we, we should beg Allah for taqwa for ourselves and our communities that we have respectability we have the dignity of, of respecting Allah when dealing with fitan especially and it's with fitan that people cross the bounds and so Allah dignified restraint chastity modesty you know, the honor of being able to control oneself and not just falling into what's low and vile and shameful. Wal-ghina. Wal Wal-ghina. And to ask Allah for the first meaning, ghina nafs, is to be satisfied in our hearts with Allah. Raditu billahi rabba. What a beautiful dua of the Prophet sallallahu In one narration he would say it during the adhan. And then after the adhan, this is something we should be, it should be on our tongues every morning, every evening. Raditu billahi rabba, asking Allah for ghina of the nafs, but also ghina so that we don't have to ask people for help financially or otherwise. We should be self-sufficient, asking Allah Ta'ala for these beautiful things, because these are the protections. And the, this is dignity, this is honor, this is izza. This is izza, we have to understand that, we have to teach our young people this. They need to know the door to honor and dignity. Uh, uh, Ibrahim ibn Adham, he used to make the dua, Allahumma qulni, Allahumma qulni min dhilli ma'asiyatik ila izzi ta'atik. Oh Allah, take me out, take me out of the uh, abasement and debasement and humiliation of disobedience, the folly and futile, futile, futility of, dis of disobedience into the honor and dignity and mighty triumph of obedience. The mighty triumph of obedience. And so once, once people are like that, they have the, you know, Imam Zayd talks about we need to put the fear of God back in people. The fear of God back in people. You know, we don't talk about that enough. Part of the recognition of Allah is to fear Him, Azawajal, to fear His maqam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can punish and it hurts. And we ask Allah for afia, safety from His punishment, whether this life or the next. But this is why our speech and how we write it should reflect the, the fear of Allah in our hearts. And, and the people that fall into folly and to fall into sins of the tongue and sins of the keyboard so quickly, it's because they don't, they don't have the requisite fear of Allah. We should fear Allah. And Ibn al-Khatib, another early 4th century master of Egypt, he says, إِذَا سَكَنَ الْخَوْفِ فِي الْقَلْبِ You know, when the fear of Allah resides in the heart. When the fear of Allah resides in the heart, it makes its home in the heart. That this tongue won't say except for what concerns it. The tongue will not speak except for what concerns it. Out of adab and love and respect to the teaching of the Prophet it's from the beautiful Islam of an individual to not speak about what doesn't concern him. Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let him speak good or be silent. Let him be good, speak good or be silent. All of this emanates from hearts that have ikhlas, fear of Allah, respect for Allah, and the lens then manifest this light. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make His people of prophetic light. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make His people of hearts filled with the remembrance of Allah, the light of Allah and His Messenger وسلم, the light of faith and yaqeen and certitude, the light of uh, fear of Allah and hope in Allah and love of Allah and recognition of Allah. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make our speech and our writing reflect this, these illuminations. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make our actions reflect all of these beautiful meanings. Allahumma inna nasaluka al-huda wa-tuqa wa-l-afafa wa-l-ghina. Allahumma inna nasaluka al-afu wa-l-afi wa-ma'afat ta'amma fi dunya wa-l-akhira wa-li kulli muslim. Allahumma farij anna wa'ani muslimin fi kulli makam. Allahumma shfi maradana wa maradal muslimin. Allahumma shfi maradana wa maradal muslimin. Allahumma shfi maradana wa maradal muslimin. Warham mawtana wa mawtul muslimin. Allahumma inna nasaluka al-tawfiq wal-ikhlas wa-dawama ni'ma wa-husn al-khitam. Allahumma inna na'udu bika min zawari ni'matik wa tahawli afiyatik. 
وفجاعة نعمتك وجميع سخطك هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة